The flat plain at the north of the island was ideal for airfields, which the RAF took full advantage of. Not only was Jerby operational, but a second airfield was built just a few miles away at Andreas. This airfield served a number of purposes. Fighter squadrons were stationed here as part of their training, and occasionally they would go up and engage with German bombers making raids on Belfast and Glasgow. One of the squadrons stationed at Andreas for a period was the colourful Australian 457 squadron, all of whose aircraft had distinctive decoration. As the war progressed, an air gunnery school was also set up at Andreas, and many of the buildings associated with these activities are still here. For example, this is the remains of the machine gun test range, now full of modern junk. Aircraft would have been tethered here and test fired their guns into the back wall, which in the 1940s would have been covered by inch thick metal sheets to absorb the bullets. The thing about Andres Airfield is that it was a dispersed airfield with E pens. Let me explain. A dispersed airfield means that the planes were pulled to the side of the runway when they weren't being used, unlike a modern airport where they'd all be together at the terminal. The point of this was, if the airfield came under attack from German bombers, then there was less likelihood of the planes all being hit at once. If they were together and one exploded, then they'd all be lost. It also meant that enemy aircraft would have to pass backwards and forwards repeatedly to pick all the planes off, thereby exposing themselves to a greater chance of being shot down. But the aircraft here weren't just pulled to the side and left out in the open. They were stored in specially constructed E-pens. These were huge earthen banks shaped like a giant letter E with a curved back. The aircraft were towed into the space between the banks. Because the airfield hasn't been used for 70 years, the E-pens are now really overgrown with gorse, but you can just make out the shape of the one that's here. There's a modern mobile phone mass there now, of course, but at the back you can see the shape of the letter E running down to where that skip is, and the centre of the letter is sticking out here. It was on the tarmac areas there that the aircraft were parked for protection. Looking down on the airfield from above, the shape of the E-pens is still visible. Grouped in clusters of three, there were 12 in all, with each pen accommodating two aircraft. After landing, the aircraft would be pulled into the pens for protection and servicing. If you look at the construction of the banks that make up the pens, then you can see they are largely earth and gravel. But there's something else about their construction which was critical. If you look over there, you can see a brick doorway. That's because the E-pen is constructed around a brick tunnel and packed over with earth. The idea of that was an air raid shelter. If you happen to be working on your aeroplane out here and you suddenly came under aerial attack, then you could run into there for protection. They never were actually used in an air raid because Andreas was never attacked. Even so, the detail of their construction just shows what an extraordinary amount of building was undertaken throughout Britain so quickly in the run-up to war. So those are the E-pens, but just look at this. It's incredible, so much tarmac. It's amazing to think that all this is hidden away in the Manx countryside. I'm standing at the apex of two of the three runways. The extraordinarily wide and long runways allowed planes as big as the American Flying Fortresses to make emergency landings here as they came in off the Atlantic patrols looking for U-boats. And because Andreas is privately owned, it's meant that although many of the buildings are derelict, most of them and the runways are still here. And it's still possible to make out what they were for. 
This is flying control, not restored like the one at Jerby, but still a magnificent building. This is station headquarters, from where all the administration of the airfield was run. Every group of E-Pens had a flight office where the flight commander worked with his administrative staff. And every group of E-Pens had a sleeping shelter where 48 men slept in two rows of steel bunks. This bit of tarmac is actually more interesting than it looks. You might think it's just a road, but in fact it was all part of the scheme to camouflage the airfield. They wanted to make Andreas difficult to spot if you were enemy aircraft. And the way they did this was to build fake roads, to tone down the surface of the runways, and to actually paint fake field boundaries on the surrounding grass to camouflage the whole site. This is a rare photograph taken at the time, and you can see that it's quite difficult to make out the three runways as hedges and fake roadways have been painted across them, and often this was done just using engine oil. <laughs> 